So, let us get ahead with this uh, Monte Carlo technique that we have been discussing and um, <coughs> there are uh, a number of mathematical uh, things or concepts that we want to review uh, to begin with and um, this will form the initial part of our discussion today. Um, so, we need to learn about random variables. So, what are random variables? Uh, if we uh, want a sequence of numbers uh, where the predictability of um, you know uh, the next number would not be there is called a random variable a set of random variables. So, uh, that uh, if we want to choose a number or rather want to predict a number after a given sequence of number that is uh, that cannot be done. So, it is completely random. So, uh, we know the roulette wheel, uh, the wheel that you have seen in casinos uh, is the simplest mechanical tool that can generate random numbers. Okay? And um, so, this uh, will be completely random with each um, turn of the wheel one would get a different number. And um, uh, while of course, we know that the random variables imply that uh, one cannot predict a number after a sequence of uh, numbers, uh, the distribution of the random variables may still be known. Okay? So, the distribution, the uh, region or the way they are distributed uh, from some A to some B or from 0 to 1 that could still be known. And uh, so, this is a property of the random variable that the distributions are often known. And um, so, the distribution of a random variable uh, yields the probability of a random number. Okay? So, if you want to know what is the probability of getting a random number, so that uh, information is supplied by the distribution of the random variable. So, uh, we understand that uh, practically it is uh, not possible to generate a sequence of run numbers which are completely random, which are truly random. Um, the reason being that, that uh, in uh, a computer, um, uh, there are certain algorithms which uh, produce these random numbers. Okay? And these uh, things are uh, uh, often, you know, uh, follow, since they follow a certain algorithm, uh, they cannot be predicted. And uh, on top of that, uh, the additional constraint would be the, uh, uh, the usage has to be fast enough um, for you know practical applications. Okay? So, they have to churn out the numbers, random numbers fast enough so that the algorithm should not be too complicated. So, to overcome this problem, one can actually produce pseudo random numbers which are uh, calculated using a mathematical formula. And since they are uh, coming out emerging from a mathematical formula, they are bound to be uh, reproducible. But of course, uh, it will appear random to someone who is either not familiar with the algorithm or that it has been used at all for uh, uh, you know uh, him or her, it will uh, appear as a random variable or uh, completely random. So, the first method to generate random numbers was uh, by this uh, John von Neumann, uh, who we are familiar with uh, the boundary condition. Um, so, this is called as a mid square method. And how it is done is that suppose we have a 4 digit number say it is equal to x 1 equal to 0 0.9876. So, upon squaring one gets x 1 square equal to 97535376. Thus, from a 4 digit number we actually uh, come to a 8 digit number, we arrive at a 8 digit number. And now, take the uh, middle 4 digits that is uh, 5353 and then again square x 2 and so on. So, we will get a sequence of random numbers. Uh, so, unfortunately what happens is that this method produces a disproportionate frequency of smaller numbers. Okay? Um, in computer, uh, there are a number of um, algorithms. Uh, so, the familiar, most familiar Uh, random number generator in computers um, there are a number of them are there they are called rand so these are library which uh, you know usually it comes with a 
uh, bracket. Um, so, these, uh, these are libraries which uh, churn out random numbers. Uh, you can give the start point and the end point, you can give the variance and things like that, we will learn what the variance etcetera are. Uh, then there is something called the Gauss rand. Uh, then uh, from the CERN uh, uh, lab, this is called CERN lib, which is a CERN library. Um, then there is uh, something called a CL HEP. HEP is for high energy physics and then there are roots and so on. Okay. Um, so, most of them um, give you random numbers uh, with a varied degree of speed and of course, uh, random properties. Okay. So, these are uh, a preliminary discussion of how one can get random numbers. Let us now talk about the probability distribution. As we said, that even if uh, a number is a random number, uh, one can uh, the probability of those random numbers are or the probability distribution of those random numbers uh, can be known. So, uh, let us talk about the probability distribution. Okay. Uh, the probability distribution of a discrete set of uh, random variables is a list of probabilities um, associated with each of its possible values. Okay. Um, so, this is for a discrete set of random variables, uh, whereas for a continuous set of uh, random variables or a continuous uh, Um, say x, um, it can take, uh, um, it, it can take any value in a certain interval a, b. Um, the discrete distribution, which is this above one, is called the probability function and whereas the continuous distribution, which is often going to be used by us, as a probability density function, or in short, we can call it a PDF. Okay. Uh, the probability of uh, x i, let us uh, write it in a different page. The probability of x i falling 
in an arbitrary interval a prime and b prime say for example, is given by p which is a prime less than x less than b prime it is equal to a prime b prime p of x dx, where p of x is called the uh, this is the probability density function. That is the PDF. Okay. All right. So, uh, the PDF satisfies two conditions. Uh, one is that it is positive definite for any x uh, in the range a b and second is that it is a normalized distribution. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, going to be a little mathematical, but what it says is that we are interested in um, a random number uh, sequence of random numbers, set of random numbers and these random numbers they have a distribution and for a continuous case which we mostly be interested in this uh, distribution is called as the probability density function or it is called the PDF and this PDF has a property that uh, it is equal to a positive definite uh, in an interval for x to be x is a random number to be in, in an interval a and b and it is also normalized which is the integral of uh, p x dx between a and b should become equal to 1. Now, there are various things that are interesting uh, in this distribution and which are use uh, will be used in your uh, Monte Carlo uh, <coughs> technique or the simulation. So, the first one is called as a mean value and more often than not it is called as the expectation value or expected value. Okay. Um, the second moment of the distribution will define what that is and the variance so these are important quantities of this pdf so, once again just to remind you the PDF is the distribution of the random variable x, so it is called P x. So, because uh, the first one, so let us uh, this one, uh, let us call this as the first one, this or this, uh, this is the second one and uh, this is the third one. So, these are going to be defined by us now. So, the first one it is written as this expected value of x is called as the mean uh, and that is equal to a to b x p x d x. Those who know uh, weighting or calculation of say center of mass you are familiar with anyway in your uh, classical mechanics or some elementary uh, physics course. Uh, this is the way one actually calculates uh, according to the weight and x is the distance from some chosen uh, origin of a given mass and then of course, this has to be divided by uh, some quantity which is the total mass of the system. But uh, this is the first moment or here it is called as a mean value or the expected value of the distribution. Similarly, the second one is called a second moment which is equal to the, uh, so this is uh, equal to a to b and you have a x square p of x dx.
and the third one which is called as a variance we will write it with a ver of x which is uh, denoted by sigma square this is equal to this and then you have a x minus mu whole square mu being the mean and this is defined as x minus mu uh, whole square p of x dx and so on and this can be simplified as e of x square uh, minus mu square uh, because uh, this term which is uh, if, if you expand this uh, you will get a term which is x square uh, then there is a, a term which is 2 x mu uh, and then there is a term which is mu square. Uh, okay. So, these terms uh, when you take uh, you know uh, when you multiply it by the uh, by the p x. So, the first term is uh, x square p x and then the term which is here will give you another x square uh, um, here uh, because this x p x um, uh, and then the multiplied by the mu uh, and uh, so that is equal to your mu square and then there is a, a, a mu here which will cancel uh, and then we will get a minus mu square here. Okay. So, uh, this is how you can expand it uh, yourself and see this and uh, this is equal to um, so e uh, expected value of x square minus a mu square and uh, sigma is called as a standard deviation or the variance as I told uh, I mean the sigma is called as a standard deviation and square of that is called as a variance. Moving ahead with the discussion, so consider two continuous random variables. Uh, x and y okay um, assume that they are statistically independent uh, so what we mean by that is uh, uh, so, that is the distribution of x x um, does not depend upon the distribution of y. Okay. Um, and of course, vice versa. Okay. Same with uh, the distribution of y also does not depend upon the distribution of x. Uh, so, thus the joint probability density function is f x y x y equal to f x x um, f y y. Okay. So, these are two uh, PDFs probability uh, distribution functions and uh, the covariance of these two random variables Um, is given by. So, we will write it with a cof x y it is equal to e x minus e of uh, x um, and uh, 
this will be there later. So, it is y minus e then it is a y this and then this. So, okay. so this is the uh, definition of covariance. Uh, so, this is equal to e um, x y minus e x e y. Okay. So, this is the meaning of covariance and also the correlation between these two random variables. So, this is given by so C O R R x y which is equal to a covariance x y divided by the variance of x and the variance of y. Okay. So, these are the definitions of uh, uh, the two random variables and the joint probability um, density function is given by this. Uh, and of course, as we said if x and y are uncorrelated, uh, then their convergence or rather their covariance not convergence their covariance and the correlation are automatically 0. zero which gives e x y it is equal to e x as I said e is the expected value and uh, e y. So, what it means is that uh, a mean of the product mean or the expected value of the product equal to product of the mean. Okay. So, uh, statistically independent random variables um, are always uncorrelated, uncorrelated But uncorrelated variables, random variables that is, can still be dependent. Okay. So, to give you an example here is that uh, let x be a, a random variable. distributed over over minus 1 and 1 and let y be another um, random variable um, such that y is equal to x square. Uh, so, the random variables are uncorrelated. but clearly not independent. They are of course, dependent by this relation y equal to x square. Okay. So, uh, these are some of the properties of this uh, random variable and the definitions of these expected value and the variance and so on. And uh, let us now talk about the M C integration and what are its relationship with these. So, let f x be 
an arbitrary continuous function function and y equal to f x is the corresponding random variable. We have seen that uh, the expected value and the variance of y y are given as e y equal to e f of x equal to a to b f of x p x d x. Of course, we have defined that p x is the probability density function and the variance of y is a variance of f of x which is equal to a to b uh, f x minus e uh, f x square p x d x. Okay. So, this is uh, <coughs> we already know about it just cast it in a slightly different form. Uh, so, our goal is to calculate the expectation value of f x um, without uh, explicitly computing the integral. Okay. Uh, this is important to note that uh, we also have done integration in which we have a function, we need to integrate this function f x d x uh, between a to b and or some uh, p to q and things like that. Okay. So, this is that function that we had say this is the function f of x and this is x and we need to actually find out the area under this curve. And in order to find the area under the curve, we have uh, divided the entire region that we have to integrate over um, into various grids of equal size. And uh, we have calculated the area of all those grids and have summed them over according to certain formula. Okay? And we have seen that uh, you know the Newton's uh, um, or rather the Simpson's one third rule and the Simpson's three eighth rule, etc or there are Romberg formula and other formula which have uh, with a varied degree of accuracy have computed the integral. Here instead of doing that we are taking random points and these random uh, the, the distribution corresponding to these random points or the random variables are being used in order to compute uh, the value of the integral. And uh, then uh, we are of course, uh, we are saying that we will calculate the expectation value without explicitly performing the integral and uh, this uh, uh, can be achieved via uh, MC simulation, how we let us see that. Crude Monte Carlo method or a simple rather or let us call it a simple Monte Carlo method, we call it MC in short. So, a simple estimate of the integral which we want to perform uh, is uh, a to b f x p x d x can be obtained uh, 
by uh, generating n samples um, such that uh, you know x i uh, from i equal to 1 to um, to, to n and uh, this is uh, x i equal to say uh, q of x and um, and computing the estimate okay so what we are saying is that um, take some random um, variables or random points uh, between A and B and uh, calculate the uh, values um, at those you know random points and then sum all of them up and divide it by the number of points that you have taken and uh, uh, then uh, this will give you the value of the integral. So, we are not calculating the expected value of f of x, uh, but using this uh, summation we are going to get the value of the uh, integral. And uh, this uh, accuracy of the method or the utility of the method uh, depends upon two important concepts in mathematics and which we are going to discuss now. So, whether you say accuracy or you say applicability. So, of the method or this claim um, for understanding that uh, we will have to um, talk about uh, two things. One is called as the law of large numbers and the second thing is called as a central limit theorem. We will mostly uh, discuss the second one, but the first one is also important. So, let us write down the law of large numbers. So, what it says is that, so this is the one. So, the average or the mean of a sequence of random variables of a known distribution converges to the expected value as the numbers in the sequence goes to infinity. So, let us select the numbers n numbers say Uh, x i i equal to 1 to 2 n with probability density p x then i equal to 1 by n f of x i, i equal to 1 to n, this tends to the expected value uh, f of x, uh, this is equal to a to b f x p x dx. This is exactly was written in the 
um, the simple or the crude estimate that we have written. So, what it means is that uh, if you have uh, a number of uh, or a sequence of uh, random variables, um, the average of that, uh, so by taking the average means we sort of sum them up, all of them up and divide it by the number of uh, uh, the numbers in that set. This is equal to the expected value, which means the expected value is defined as the, uh, the number uh, or the, uh, you know, the <coughs> distribution uh, multiplied by this uh, function uh, that we are talking about. So, uh, this in the limit of large n, so this is just simply uh, calculating, so take a sequence of random numbers, calculate the function at those, uh, you know, random numbers and then take an algebraic sum uh, and this algebraic sum will converge to the expected value which we have defined with the probability density function of those uh, random variables and uh, this uh, will uh, happen in the uh, limit of uh, when n is very large, okay. And importantly, the second one which is called as the central limit theorem. Okay. Um, the sum of large number of independent large number of uh, independent random variables is approximately normally distributed when normalized. Let me tell you what it means is that, um, so uh, consider the density of a normal distribution. N mu sigma square, uh, this is how it is uh, defined. Uh, so, the mu is the mean and this is the variance. So, this is how a, a normal distribution, so a normal distribution looks like this. Okay. So, this is your uh, normal distribution with uh, this, you know, being the mu and the full width that half maximum will give you measure of the, uh, the variance. So, uh, this one uh, with a mean mu and variance sigma square, that is uh, n uh, mu sigma square it is equal to a 1 by 2 pi sigma square exponential x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square. So, suppose all x i's are independent, all these random variables are independent and uh, identically distributed. So, they are called IIDs, identical, independent and identically distributed. Um, uh, distributed, okay. So, this otherwise the sentence does not make uh, any sense. Distributed random variables um, with 0 mean.
so that is mu equal to 0 it does not matter, but uh, you can additionally impose this constraint that mu equal to 0 which means that shifting the normalized uh, uh, this uh, normal distribution uh, on the along the x axis and this is uh, and of course uh, variance sigma square then what it means the central limit theorem is that x1 plus x2 plus xn this divided by root over of n this is it uh, converges into the normal distribution for n to be large as 0 and sigma square. Okay. So, this is the um, uh, definition of or rather the statement of the central limit theorem. So, all these x's are random variables. So, the average of all these uh, or sum of all these random variables uh, divided by this root over n is a normal uh, distribution for n to be large okay. uh, with of course, 0 mean, but it does not matter. I mean if these variables do not have 0 mean, Uh, we can always shift by um, subtracting by subtracting the expected value from them, which is e of x, which is the mean as you know. So, so, it just says that it is not important to have a 0 mean, but just uh, that we uh, for the ease of definition we can assume that. So, the important mathematical properties that this M C technique has Okay. Um, so, if the variance of f of x is finite, the M C estimate is consistent. Okay. Uh, two the M C estimate is asymptotically unbiased. The M C estimate is asymptotically normally distributed. The standard deviation of the MC method is given by, so this is a, a, a variance of um, f of x divided by root over of n. It is free from um, the, let us say the curse of dimensionality. That it does not matter which dimension you are talking about. Six 
the accuracy can be uh, increased two ways of course. One is increasing n the number of sample points uh, by increasing n, uh, but the convergence or the success is very slow. Convergence by increasing the sample slow, rather it is more uh, you know convenient to decrease. Uh, so, uh, by so this is a and let us not call it 7, but let us call it as b uh, with uh, the variance can be reduced. Okay. So, uh, these methods are called as the variance reducing techniques and this is what we are going to see in the next discussion. Uh, so, these uh, just to summarize very quickly is that uh, instead of choosing specific data points in order to do an integral, we have chosen a set of random variables and these random the properties of these random variables are discussed. Now, even if the variables are random or pseudo random does not matter, I mean the computer will ultimately give you a pseudo random according to an algorithm, but even with that pseudo random distribution, um, that distribution can be actually well known, the distribution of those pseudo random numbers. And this distribution is called as the probability density function and uh, we can calculate the expected value of these random numbers by you know um, sort of uh, weighting it uh, with the probability function or we can calculate the variance and so on. So, if you have a function f of x, you can calculate the value of the function at all the discrete points x i, where x i's are chosen and randomly chosen from a given distribution. And uh, then one can actually sum all these things up and divide it by the number of points that will give you the uh, simple estimate of the value of the integral. So, this is uh, MC method. And uh, then of course, we have uh, gone uh, and navigated around certain mathematical properties and uh, they are of course, law of large numbers and the central limit theorem which uh, says that uh, these uh, uh, the properties of these random variables. So, uh, the law of large numbers of course, say that you know uh, that uh, you can uh, the approximation that we have taken that is uh, the value of the integral is uh, when the limit of large numbers would converge into the expected value of the, um, the <coughs> function uh, or uh, uh, the function calculated at those uh, uh, discrete points or uh, these random uh, points. And uh, the central limit theorem says something very important which says that uh, if you have a set of random variables, the average of all these random variables, they uh, are uh, <coughs> approximately normally distributed. So, let us correct it is normally distributed when they are of course, normalized. Normalized means we have a normalized distribution and uh, um, based on that, uh, these important mathematical properties arise such as uh, if the variance is finite, then the uh, MC estimate is uh, consistent, it is uh, it's unbiased, it is free from dimensional uh, consideration, it is asymptotically normally distributed, standard deviation can be found and we want the standard deviation to be low of this, uh, of this method. And for doing the, land, uh, the standard deviation to be low, one can either increase n which is seen to have very slow convergence, whereas uh, the variance can be reduced and there are various techniques that we are going to discuss on that. Mm -hmm.